So lately, you probably have been seeing a lot of commercials from 23andMe and Ancestry.com that talks about how we use your DNA to determine your ancestry. Well, in this lab, we're going to learn about one of the techniques where we use DNA to help identify crime scenes or help identify family connections. So let's begin to look at the different techniques we're going to use in order for us to identify specific presence of um, segments of DNA. So the first thing we're going to look at is this thing called a gel. And this is where we get the term gel electrophoresis from. Gel, because you'll see that this is a gelatin-like substance that we're going to use as basically a molecular sieve. And electrophoresis we're going to see is we're going to expose our samples to basically an electric current in order to separate the different pieces of DNA. Okay. So to begin with, we first want to remove the black rubber dams from our gel. And these rubber dams are only used because the gel is like jello. It starts off as a powder, you put it in water, you boil it, and then you put it in a mold and allow it to cool. This is our mold that we're using. Okay? And so the dam allows us to do that. Right? The next thing we want to do is we want to remove the comb. And the comb allows us to basically position pieces in the gel that our segment is going to be loaded onto. So here you see these holes. This is where we're going to load our samples. And as we run the samples, we're going to see that they're going to migrate through the gel and separate as they're migrating through the gel. So our next step is we're going to put our gel in this acrylic-based apparatus. And this is called our electrophoresis apparatus. This is the apparatus by which we're going to expose an electric current to our sample so that we can get our samples to move through the gel. So to do this, you'll notice that we want to line up our gel in a very specific orientation in our apparatus. So you see this little indentation in our apparatus. It should line up with the notch in our gel. Okay. All right. So we're going to end up with something that looks like this. The reason why we want to make sure that we have the proper orientation is, remember, we're trying to get our sample to move from this end of the gel to this end of the gel. Our DNA is going to be a negatively charged molecule. Therefore, I want to make sure that at the top, it is exposed to the negative electrode, and the bottom is the positive electrode. Understand the concept that opposite charges attract and same charges repel. We're going to repel the DNA from this end and pull the DNA from this end so that it migrates through the gel. Notice that in our current configuration, these two are not electrically connected to each other. And so we won't get a current if we try to plug in our device at this moment. So what we want to do is we want to get them so that they're electrically connected. Well, think about why you never take a bath while you're blow drying your hair. Because if the blow dryer lands in the tub, it electrifies the water that's in the bathtub. And that's because that water has ions, and those ions will allow it to conduct electricity. We're going to use that same concept here. So here we have a buffer. And this buffer has ions in it that's going to allow us to basically connect these two electrodes so that we get the flow of electricity. So our next step is to apply buffer. And notice that I want to make sure that I completely cover my gel. Okay? And this is how you're going to ensure that all the sample experiences this pull of the electric field. So our next step is to load our samples in our gel. So we're going to use a pipetter. Um, these are devices that allows you to um, suck up specific volumes in a fixed amount. Okay? 
now you'll notice that there are letters that's on each one of our samples. So using your lab manual, you can follow who these samples belong to, okay, by matching up A, B, C, D, and F, as you see in your lab manual. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to pull the sample into my tip. And then next, I'm going to show you how we load the sample into our gel. Notice that now that we have loaded our samples, our samples don't readily mix with the buffer. And that's because the dye that we use to coat the DNA with is heavier than water. And thus, when we load the samples into our holes, because they're heavier than water, they float to the bottom of the holes or the wells. And our last step is to finally assemble the remaining pieces of the apparatus so that now we can begin to separate our segments of DNA. So we're going to add the top of our apparatus, matching up the colors. So the red goes with red, black with black. Then we're going to plug in our apparatus into its power source. Again, matching up the colors so that we always have the correct charge that's flowing to our sample and then we're going to turn on our power source. You will notice that the power source is working when you see bubbles that appear at both electrodes. So now let's look at the results of our electrophoresis. Notice now you can clearly see how the DNA has migrated through the gel. You also notice that, as we follow with our lab manual, this was sample A, B, C, D, E, and F. And again, look at your lab manual to see who those samples belonged to. So to read this particular um, analysis, we'll see that the pieces of DNA will migrate based upon their size. To understand how we got these pieces, be sure to read in your textbook about biotechnology and restriction enzymes. So if I'm looking at my analysis, my results, I'll see that these pieces of DNA are all the same size. In other words, their sequence was the same because the restriction enzyme cut them in the same manner. And what I do is I compare these pieces among different individuals in order to determine that they have the same sequence of DNA. Okay? And this is how we find those connections. So this is for our crime scene investigation. And now, using these results, you can determine whose DNA was left behind at the crime scene.